In today's cartoon story joke, we travel back in time to the toga tactic world of ancient Rome. Forget grumpy husbands and water tricks, here's a whole different kind of marital mayhem. Imagine this, you're Julia, daughter of the mighty Emperor Augustus. Life's good, right? Palaces with golden plumbing, chariot rides with rock star centaurs delivering pizza. Wrong. Dad's a total buzzkill who insists you spend all day spinning wool like some kind of toga-wearing Rapunzel with a serious mommy issues complex and a sheep for a best friend. Here's the thing about Roman women. History basically ignored them. No voting, no writing, no leaving hilarious graffiti about politicians on public statues, which, let's be honest, would have been hilarious. But hey, at least they weren't stuck in a tower. Although being stuck in a palace with an interior designer who thinks the only acceptable color is sheep off white isn't much better. Imagine Augustus's idea of a slumber party, braiding competitions and mandatory bedtime stories about the history of wool production. Legally, things weren't peachy either. Dads ruled daughters, then husbands ruled wives. Talk about a control freak convention that would make even your grandma's bridge club look like a mosh pit. Thankfully, by the first century AD, some women got a break. They could manage their own businesses, buy fancy silk robes, because who wants to constantly shed like a molting poodle, and even become legally independent if they had three kids. Three kids, like some kind of weird Roman PTA membership perk that came with a complimentary minivan and a lifetime supply of juice boxes. Most women, though, were stuck spinning and weaving. You'd think an emperor's daughter could get out of that, right? Wrong. Enter Julia, the firecracker princess with a wanderlust for something other than a never-ending supply of yarn. She wasn't exactly your typical toga-clad Penelope, waiting for Odysseus to get lost at sea again. Let's just picture a Roman Cleopatra, except with a library of scandalous gossip instead of ASP jokes, and a strategically placed toga strap malfunction that would make even Julius Caesar do a double take and maybe blush a little. Of course, Dad Augustus, the ultimate party pooper, who probably invented mandatory toga wearing just to make his daughter miserable, did not find this amusing. He banished Julia faster than you can say, gladiator fight. Moral of the story, even emperor's daughters couldn't break the rules, especially the ones about itchy wool and public displays of non-wifely behavior that would make even a toga-clad Venus blush. So next time you're stuck doing chores, remember Julia, at least you don't have to pretend to be the perfect wife while rocking a serious case of yarn-induced boredom. Unless, of course, your boss is secretly a time-traveling Augustus with a hidden stash of wool and a surprising lack of chill, and a pet goose that keeps hissing at you in Latin. In the chaotic circus of Roman life, keeping your loved ones calm wasn't exactly a walk in the toga park. Here's a guide, guaranteed to confuse more than soothe, but hopefully tickle your funny bone. For the frazzled Roman lady, here is a couple of things that had to be considered. First, there was the bath time with Bacchus, wine god, not the neighbor's goat. Picture Cleopatra, but instead of fancy oils, fill the tub with leftover grape juice, because who can afford real wine after those Roman taxes? Throw in some rose petals for ambiance, and maybe a rubber ducky for good measure. Secondly, there was the gossip gladiators. Is your wifey throwing a toga tantrum? Ditch the chamomile tea and essential oils, let her vent about the latest palace scandals involving toga malfunctions and chariot crashes that would make reality TV blush. If that fails, rent out a mini coliseum for a private gladiator show. There's nothing like a thumbs down from Caesar's wife, or should we say, thumbs maybe this guy needs a new career, to put some pep in her step. And last for the ladies were the black market bonanza. Roman law meant most women couldn't own businesses. so. Unleash your inner rogue and take your sweetheart on a thrilling shopping spree through the forbidden black market. Just be prepared to outrun the toga police and maybe a goose or two if you snag that illegal silk robe she's been eyeing. Now, for the stressed Roman dude, here is what had to be considered. 
First, there was meat, topia, not mushy mush. Forget those wimpy bowls of barley. A real Roman man craves a feast fit for a gladiator. Think roasted boar the size of a small Dacia, mountains of grapes that would make Bacchus jealous, and enough bread to soak up the inevitable wine spillage, because toga cleaning is a nightmare. Second for the guys were chariot chaos, or fistfight fun time. Channel your inner Julius Caesar and drag your buddy to the chariot races. Bonus points if you bribe a charioteer to nearly wipe out spectacularly. Don't worry, it's all part of the entertainment. If fistfights are more his thing, well, a good old-fashioned brawl might be just the stress reliever he needs. Just make sure it's pre-arranged and nobody loses an eye. Those things are expensive to replace. Then lastly, the guys indulged in some wine wisdom, the drunken debate. Roman men loved a good philosophical discussion. So, for a truly unforgettable night, engage your buddy in a deep debate about the merits of various toga styles. Or, to get the real party started, see who can drink the most wine without falling asleep first. Loser buys the next round of chariot tickets and the hangover medicine. Just remember, this is all meant to be a laugh. Calming people down in Roman times was probably a lot trickier than this. But hey, at least you'll be the most confused, toga-clad person in the room. Now buckle up, history lovers, because we're about to get a whole lot less factual and a whole lot funnier. A woman bursts into the doctor's office, practically dragging her husband behind her. He's fuming, muttering under his breath, and looks like a teapot about to explode. The woman throws her hands up in exasperation. Doctor, she pleads, you have to help. My husband loses his temper at the drop of a hat. One minute he's fine, the next he's ready to launch into a volcanic eruption. The doctor, a man who'd seen it all, or at least most of it, calmly adjusts his spectacles. Hmm, this sounds like a case of the marital meltdowns. Tell you what, he says, turning to the husband who's now resembling a simmering pot. Why don't you wait outside? I need to have a private word with your wife. The husband throws the doctor a withering look, but eventually stomps out, muttering something about shrink tactics. Once alone with the frazzled woman, the doctor leans forward conspiratorially. All right, here's the secret weapon. When you feel your husband's about to erupt like Mount Vesuvius, grab a glass of water, swish it around in your mouth, nice and vigorously. Don't swallow it. Just keep it swishing. The woman blinks, a little confused. But doctor, how will that help? The doctor winks. Don't worry, you will see, and then we will talk again. Two weeks later, the woman bursts back into the doctor's office, practically skipping with glee. Her husband trails behind, sporting an expression like a kicked puppy who just discovered a hidden stash of steak bones. Doctor, it worked she beams. Every time my husband started to lose it, I'd grab a glass of water and swish, swish, swish. He calmed right down every single time. That was the most brilliant idea. But how does just a water do that? The doctor winks. The water itself doesn't matter, my dear. It's keeping your mouth shut that does the trick. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.